With the world on edge, people are looking to their leaders for reassurance and answers. Unfortunately, we have him. So last night, the president held an emergency live address from the Oval Office to calm the nation down and to find someone else to blame. Breaking news, tipping point. President Trump addresses the nation on the coronavirus pandemic using just his second Oval Office speech to announce the U.S. will suspend most travel from Europe. The European Union failed to take the same precautions and restrict travel from China and other hotspots. As a result, a large number of new clusters in the United States were seeded by travelers from Europe. This is the most aggressive and comprehensive effort to confront a foreign virus in modern history. Okay, first of all, it isn't a foreign virus. It's just a virus, okay? <laughs> Trump makes it sound like Corona doesn't speak English. <laughs> and, and, and also, we can blame Europe for many things. Colonialism, skinny jeans, Piers Morgan, <laughs> but this virus is worldwide, all right? It was gonna get here no matter what Europe did. Honestly, it's beginning to look like shutting down borders is just Trump's go-to solution for everything. This is all he thinks about. What problem shut a border? Problem shut a border. <laughs> Does he do this in his personal life, too? Yeah? Is Melania just like, I don't love you anymore, Donald? And he's like, close the borders. <laughs> no one's getting in or out of this marriage. <laughs> now, Donald Trump's presidential address turned out to be as calming as a pack of fireworks dropped into a bag of cocaine because <laughs> not only did he surprise everyone with this announcement, but it turns out he almost got everything wrong. President Trump ramping up his response to the coronavirus outbreak, but instead of reassuring the public, he caused more confusion than calm, like this statement. We will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The Department of Homeland Security quickly clarifying, assuring the travel restrictions will not apply to U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and some of their family members. The ban instead would only apply to foreign nationals. Trump caused more uncertainty when he said the restriction would apply to trade. And these prohibitions will not only apply to the tremendous amount of trade and cargo, but various other things. But Trump took to Twitter to clear up that statement, writing, it is very important for all countries and businesses to know that trade will in no way be affected by the 30-day restriction on travel from Europe. The restriction stops people, not goods. President Trump further jumbled the message when he addressed the health care costs associated with coronavirus. Earlier this week, I met with the leaders of health insurance industry who have agreed to waive all co-payments for coronavirus treatments. A White House official later corrected the notion, saying co-payments would be waived only for coronavirus tests, not for treatments of the disease. I'm, I'm sorry, but this is, this is unbelievable. Like, I would, I would understand if Trump made mistakes, right, if this whole thing was off the cuff, but how is it possible to get so many things wrong in a pre-written speech? <laughs> This is crazy. Watching an oval address shouldn't be a game of two truths and a lie. <laughs> He's just up there like, the coronavirus is very dangerous. We need to be vigilant. And my babysitter growing up was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. <laughs> God bless America. And this misinformation that the president spread, it caused actual chaos, right? The European travel ban doesn't include American citizens. But that's not what Trump said in his speech. So Americans who were on vacation in Europe rushed to the airport in a panic to fly home before the ban took effect. Yeah, there are even reports of people shelling out thousands of dollars for a last-minute ticket, because they were panicking. Yeah, and then the ones who couldn't get them, they just hung off the airplane like one of those trains in India. <laughs> Trump caused so much confusion that even the coronavirus was probably like, okay, wait, can I fly to America or not? Like, I, I, I'm just gonna call Delta. I don't know what's going on here. So just to be clear, Americans, Americans can fly home from Europe, which if you think about it, means they could bring corona back. Yeah, it's not a fail safe, because Americans always bring something back with them whenever they come from Europe. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing they do, whether it's a disease or a dumb new way to say croissant. <laughs> yeah. It's a croissant, okay, you're from Philly, calm down. <laughs> and another thing, another thing that doesn't make sense is that although Trump banned travel from Europe, he didn't ban flights from Ireland and the UK. And when Trump was asked about that today, he gave one of the strangest explanations of all time. 
<laughs> and one of the reasons the uh, U.K. basically has been uh, — it's got the border. It's got very strong borders. And uh, they're — they're doing a very good job. They don't have very much infection at this point, and hopefully they'll keep it that way. Sorry, what? <laughs> the U.K. is fine because it's got the border? <laughs> Other countries in Europe also have the border. <laughs> Unless maybe does he mean the water? Is that it? <laughs> what, does Trump think the coronavirus doesn't know how to swim? <laughs> because that's racist. And also, also, I don't even... I, like, I can't believe I'm saying... It's not true. The U.K. and Ireland have more corona cases than many of the countries on that list that is banned. So, let's just be real. The reason the U.K. and Ireland are exempt is probably because Trump owns golf courses there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what I think. You know, if, if, if Iran thought about it, they would just put a Trump golf course in Tehran. Yeah, they'd have a nuclear deal tomorrow. Trump would just be like, now you're enriching me and uranium. It's a win-win. <laughs> Win-win. <laughs> so... So, look, I, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. President Trump's Oval Office address last night, it was an absolute disaster. All right, but there was a silver lining. Because, you see, for some strange reason, the cameras were recording Trump before he gave his address, <laughs> right? But he didn't realize it was rolling. And so, today, we got to see the real Trump when he's not acting presidential. And honestly, this was pure comedy gold. You want to do this for me, Alex, please? <laughs> What's our timing? Yeah, two minutes and 20 seconds. Do you like the book being on the desk or not? <laughs> or would you rather have it not be? Maybe it looks better. It gives you something up here, right? Does it matter? A what? Wow. Well, uh-oh. I got a pen mark. Anybody have any white... Do you have any white stuff? <laughs> oh, f Does anyone have any white stuff? <laughs> First of all, his name is Mike Pence, okay, Mr. President? <laughs> but can I just say... I can safely say this is the first time in my life that I've seen the deleted scenes of a presidential address. <laughs> Like, America's downfall might be scary, but you gotta admit, the bloopers are hilarious, you know? <laughs> and it was, it was really weird hearing a president in the Oval Office say, oh, f <laughs> Although, I guess now we know what it sounds like whenever he gets a call from Eric. Ah. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Donald Trump is as freaked out by coronavirus as regular citizens which is wild because he's the president. And the reason I say that is because it turns out the cameras carried on rolling after Trump ended his speech. <laughs> and... And his reaction was priceless. God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. We're clear. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is not the sound you want to hear from a president after a serious address. <laughs> right? FDR didn't reassure the nation by saying, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Okay, daddy needs a margarita. Can I get a margarita? <laughs> I need a drink. Oh, they're still, they're still here? <laughs> so, look, this is all to say that despite the efforts of sports leagues, amusement parks, state and local governments, unfortunately, the man at the top just does not seem to have his shit together. And with coronavirus now in full pandemic mode, all I have to say to that is... Oh, f***. <laughs> You're being serious. Leaders are afraid to just say the thing. <laughs> it, it's not like we don't... We, because it seems callous, but we don't want to say the honest thing in society, and that is... If you, like, if you're gonna die, you're gonna die. No, because I really think it is important to have perspective... Because death is, like, a thing that terrifies many of us, right? But if you have perspective in and around so many things, you start to understand... So, for instance, here's... Coronavirus has claimed 5,000 lives across the globe. 5,000 people across the planet right now. Yes, the number increases, but 5,000 people across the planet. And so I'm not saying we must be ignorant of all risk and you don't want the virus to spread to those who are most vulnerable, but it's also like you... It would be good to have a leader who can put things in perspective. The problem with Trump is he's more worried about how it affects the perception of him versus what he's doing. This is where you realize how important good leadership is. 
You know what I'm saying? Because a good leader would set expectations for a nation and put you in a good place. So the way I always think of it is like a pilot. Like for me, the best pilots are the ones who come on and tell you, hey, it's gonna be bumpy. <laughs> I, I love those, because I get terrified when I fly, but I love it when the pilot goes, hey, everybody, so it's gonna be really bumpy, so we're gonna be suspending service, there won't be any meals served for a while, but I'm gonna try to get to the, the right altitude and hopefully it'll smooth out, and then I'll let you guys know when it's, time to, when it's safe to stand up. And then when the bumps start, you're like, ah, this is the shit he was telling us about. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> but at least you're in the, you're like, okay, 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 okay. I get what, you get what I'm saying? But like, there's nothing worse than you fly. And then the pilot comes and is like, nothing to, nothing to worry about, folks. <laughs> and it's like, shit is shaking right now. <laughs> shit is shaking, the seatbelt sign is on. And the pilot's like, no, 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 there's nothing wrong. There's nothing. <laughs> Something is wrong. The flight attendant is falling. She just, she hit the door. Now she's on the ceiling. <laughs> no, there's, there's nothing wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats, please. We're fine. We're fine, ladies and gentlemen. We're fine, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're not fine. But if you tell us ahead of time, we get ready for it, we buckle our seatbelts, everybody rides it out, and then we get to smooth sailing, and then we're on this thing together.